grab a cup of tea and sit down with me for the next few minutes. I think this is going to be one of the most enriching uh, encounters you could have uh, when it comes to biblical understanding. So keep that in mind as the program progresses. But I just want to welcome everybody. If you're brand new, you just kind of surfed across the uh, channel and you stopped Stay there, please. And we want to welcome you and hope that you'll come back very, very often. And uh, you regular ones, you know, you know who you are. And we appreciate you so much. I love hearing from you. And uh, you say some really nice things about this, how this program blesses you. And when you do that, that is certainly a blessing to me. And so thank you. Uh, you're, you're the ones who really make the program. Now, my guest today is Reverend Lawrence S. Perry. He's an author, been in the ministry more than 26 years. He's worked uh, with uh, alcoholics as far as uh, rehab goes, uh, spoken in conferences, workshops, is, uh, was in the Air Force in Vietnam. And he lives in cool, colorful Colorado, which is my birthplace. And I've often said about Colorado that God visits everywhere, but he lives in Colorado. And you will know what I mean if you ever experience those Rocky Mountains, my friend. And uh, Reverend Perry told me to call him Larry. So I will. I'm anxious for you to meet him because we're going to be talking about a book that has already had a profound effect on my own life called Walking Through the Weeds. What a great title. Um, and it's exploring the source of blessings and cursings. It's, it's been very thought provoking to me and I've taught Bible for years and uh, been in the church all of my life. And every once in a while, this nugget comes along that really affects you and brings the Bible to life. And that's what he did for me in this book. So I'm anxious for you to meet him. And I'm going to join Stephanie and we're going to fix a hot chicken salad. I think if we all lived 100 lives each, you could keep coming up with different recipes for chicken salad. So here's another one. Uh, before I join her, though, I forgot to put my bracelet on, but I want to offer you that petite cross bracelet. Uh, remember Martha Brangenberg from Karis uh, Gift Shop told me these are really popular. You don't have yours on either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can see them. You can see them there. They yeah, are so beautiful. Pretty. You can have silver or gold color. And uh, they are so dainty. That's why we call them the Petite Cross Bracelet for that gift of at least $15. I almost said $1,500. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, if you want to just send a check, write to me at uh, Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Or... That 800 number is for your credit card or debit card, 1-800-229-0059. And we will get it right out to you. Uh, one of the other employees came up this morning to get one. She just just loved it. They're very They're so popular. Right now. Uh -huh. Very, very pretty. And that's very, very petite. Mm -hmm. Very well named. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I make the best chicken salad in the world. It's uh, more of a Hawaiian in the world? type. Yes. Have yeah. we made it on the show? Yes, we have. We might and if you order it this, again. if you order this one, we'll send you mine too. Oh, uh, this one's hot, and the uh, mine has uh, oh, chestnuts and everything in it. And, nice. Well, we won't go into that. This, okay. This is a meal. Okay. You get to spray the pan. Yeah, and that's your job. Our rule is kind of like anything that goes up in the oven, spray it. Most definitely. Yeah. Because yep. so, we have uh, <laughs> failed to do that sometimes and wished we had. Yeah, I have three cups of diced chicken. And that was a rotisserie chicken. That we just cut up, right? And Super easy. I tasted it. It tastes so good. Two cups of diced celery. The way they um, season them, the rotisserie. Yes, they do. Yes, so good. Half a uh, cup of almonds, sliced almonds. Uh, we have a quarter, a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of accent. Mm -hmm. We have two tablespoons of lemon juice. That's going to give it a kick. Yeah, a little tang. And then we have a cup of Hellman's mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched an episode yesterday <laughs> of us, and you know what I discovered? <laughs> I need to be a little more dainty when I take my bites of the food because I looked like a pig on show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's Stephanie, probably really? a good idea once in a while to watch them. <laughs> yeah, and then let's see, how much onions do we have here? Oh, two tablespoons of grated onions. Yeah. 
And then a half a cup of cheddar cheese I have. Yeah, it wasn't pretty what I saw, so and you wanna, I'll be more dainty. You want to mix this very thoroughly. Just keep mixing and mixing so that all of those good flavors. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll put this in the, in the sprayed casserole dish. And then on top, we'll put a cup of um, crushed corn flakes. And we'll put another half a cup of cheddar cheese. I got jumpers here. I'll and fill that you, back in. Yes, and then you bake it for 450 at 450 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Yep. And it uh, smells really, really. Yeah, good. you got your meal there. For sure. Mm -hmm. You can make this, you know, the night before or whatever. Throw it in the oven when you're ready. You can make this. This would be a good freezer yeah, meal. Yeah, it doesn't have to bake very long. All mm -hmm. it's supposed to do is just heat up good. And this one's bubbling. Very hot. Mm, and you know what really I was delicious. thinking? We we really give you recipes. If you have a family and you don't have a huge budget for food, we really offer things that can give you a variety. I think that's important. That sure. You could get a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store. You would only need half of the rotisserie chicken mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. You could use the other half for another meal. Sandwiches. Mm -hmm. or, and uh, th this is another one that will give you a lot of... Uh, Variety and for a lot people of for your buck. Well, for and for people like um, myself, you know, you live alone. Mm -hmm. You fix one of these, eat what you want, and then put it in little bags and freeze it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is so simple. We just want to make life easier yes, for you. you. That's what we want to do. Keep it simple. Yeah. This is really hot. That smells so so uh -huh. good. I told uh, our guest, if, he if, was he, good. If, if he's good, we'll give him some. <laughs> and you said if he wasn't, we wouldn't. But I said if he wasn't, we would anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see. I'll burn mm -hmm. my mouth first. Well, I tasted it before I put it in the oven. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Oh, let's be dainty, shall we? Yeah, remember <laughs> what you noticed. Yes. Dainty. <laughs> Here, I'll be like. <laughs> mm. Like it? Mm-hmm. Well, what's not to like? That's mm. really, really tasty. Just that little bit of lemon juice. Notice how that cake mm -hmm. kicks up? Little kick. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's a good one. You can take this to a church supper and really be proud. And Because I've seen a, a few dishes at church suppers through the years that I never put my name on them. Yeah. <laughs> I think I told you once my dad was a pastor. He'd been in their homes. Yeah. And he'd stand at the door and he'd say, don't eat that. Don't eat that. <laughs> That's a good daddy for you. Uh -huh. Want to keep from getting food poisoning. Yes. All right. If you want this recipe, just uh, let us know. The information's coming up on your screen. And with this one, I'll send you mine also. So you'll get two, one cold, one hot chicken salad, and you'll love them both. Stay with me and meet uh, my new best friend, Larry. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Okay, welcome uh, Reverend Lawrence Perry, and I've been given permission to call him Larry, and he was just telling me you cook too. Yes. <laughs> Describe what this thing is that you could fix if you had the stuff. Coquille Saint-Jacques. Never heard of that. Oh, it's a uh, scallop shrimp uh, and crab dish that is uh, marinated uh, in a uh, mushroom cream sauce with uh, sherry and it's to die for. That sounds really complicated. Uh, that sounds uh, kind oh of no, high-end. Really, no. Well, it's... Like you get yeah. in a high-end restaurant. Yes. Well, what an interesting life you've had besides writing this mm -hmm. book, uh, 26 years mm -hmm. in the ministry, uh, working with people with substance abuse and um, in the Air Force. Yes. Did you, uh, did you go to school for the Air Force in... Colorado no, Springs? No, uh, To be honest with you, uh, after I graduated out of high school, I really wasn't ready for college. 
and I decided to uh, see the world and join the uh, Air Force. And to my surprise, my first duty station was Francis E. Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. <laughs> I had to ask friends, where's Cheyenne, Wyoming? So that's seeing the world. Did you get to see the world? Vietnam. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, in 1966. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love the title of your book, uh, Walking Through the Weeds. And I think that the thing that struck me when I read the first few pages is how rich and detailed, small details, the Word of God is when you really get into it. Oh, yes. And what got me was, I've always known about the wheat and the tares, uh, which tares are weeds, mm -hmm. and that you can't pull up the tare. Of course, that was talking about people, but you can't pull up the tares because you might hurt those younger bits of uh, legitimate grain. You indicated that if the people who were listening to Jesus uh, maybe he looked at a field and that this certain kind of weed was growing up. It, it, it brought panic to their hearts. What was the name of the weed and why did it disturb them? Well, the weed uh, is called Darnell. And the unique thing about it is that it, uh, it replicates wheat when it first sprouts. Uh, you can't tell the difference between the wheat and the weeds until it really matures, but by that time, the roots entangle, and if you pull out one, you're gonna pull out the other. The other interesting thing is that it is it was toxic uh, as well. Wow. So That's powerful. Yes, it is. And, and then if you tried to pull them out, you're gonna pull out the wheat too. Exactly. Talk about a dilemma. Mm -hmm. And so as Jesus is teaching this, they knew exactly what he was talking about. Correct. Um, and then, um, well, I'll get into the other, I want to read, I just want to read something you wrote here. Okay. Uh, Darnell is the weed, was commonly known as innocuous weed in the time of Jesus. In fact, this weed was deadly if consumed by humans. Furthermore, Darnell was extremely problematic because when it first sprouted, no one could distinguish it from the wheat as the wheat and the weed looked exactly alike. <clears throat> Okay, how do, you, uh, how do you compare that to what Jesus was talking about, really, was believers and non-believers? How, well, I think... How do we it, respond it, it, to all those Darnells out there? <laughs> if you use it, as I did, as a, as a metaphor to understand the whole issue of blessings and curses, I think it speaks richly uh, in terms of uh, our own lives. Because how many times has have we experienced a situation where we thought it was a curse? Mm -hmm. And if we allow time, patience, uh, and an understanding of perhaps what God's doing, we begin to discover that which cursed us is now beginning to bless us and vice versa. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I grew up a musician and I, I kept thinking of this song when I read your book, every burden becomes a blessing. Yes. When I, when I know the Lord is yeah. near. Okay, now, also, Jesus is teaching on the hillside. And uh, your book made very clear to me how radical his teaching was because these people all were aware of Abraham, right? Correct. Uh, and the Abraham covenant, covenant and the blessing and so uh, the blessing to them, I guess, was being rich because <laughs> Abraham was very wealthy. Uh, and it kind of emulate that. And then Jesus comes along and says, you know, blessed are the poor. <laughs> Correct. Uh, there must have been about 5,000 people scratching their heads on that one. I think so. And perhaps one of the reasons why he was crucified as well, because they didn't understand really the depth of his teaching and his application of the scriptures, which was uh, the Old Testament at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about seven principles that lead to blessing. Correct. Um, I'm not gonna make you just quote them, but can you give, <laughs> give me a couple? Uh, well, the first one really has to do that the blessings always come 
uh, as a means of projection of the voice. God blesses us with his voice, and in doing so, he gives us power uh, and authority. Patience is one of the steps, uh, core values that I looked at, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that we have to sometimes wait for God's timing before we can really see the blessings that may occur. Uh, humility, opening up our uh, selves uh, to hear his word. Um, divestiture, in terms of divesting ourselves of our own will and wants. Thanksgiving, of course, love, and it cannot be completed unless you share that blessing with someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you point out too, he said, uh, blessed are the peacemakers. And the Old Testament is really a book of war. Yes, it <laughs> David, is. you know, he's just mm -hmm. going around and killing everybody. And uh, was did, did that have to shift their thinking a little oh, bit? Oh, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. Um, it is quite unique when you begin to explore the root words uh, of Scripture. Um, and you, it's like an onion, you begin to peel it back. Uh -huh. And as you peel it back, it develops more and more meaning and it becomes rich as mm -hmm. well. Uh, if you just tuned in, I am talking with uh, Reverend Lawrence Perry, I'm calling him Larry, and he wrote this book, Walking Through the Weeds. And I'm telling you, that title grabbed me and I had to read it. And we have his website up now. We're going to leave it up for the rest of the program. Please write it down. This book is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all of the regular outlets and some Christian bookstores and so forth. Um, I certainly, there, there's some personal testimony all in here, but I think it would be a great one for any Bible teacher, or any pastor to get a hold of. There's just a lot of truth in here that you can uh, glean. And... Um, of course, he, Jesus also said, blessed are you when you're persecuted. And that doesn't jive too much with American theology. No, at all. it doesn't. But around the world, um, I put on Facebook this morning, uh, don't forget to pray for Pastor Saeed, can't pronounce his last name, I'm sorry. He's in an Iranian prison and because he's a Christian, and just praying that he'll be delivered like the Apostle Peter was. God can send some angels in there and get him out. Uh, restore him to his yeah. wife and children. But persecution for Christians around the world is not that unusual. It is for Americans. Well, it's certainly active. But even for Americans to a certain it's starting. extent. It's starting. Uh, it's not only starting. I'm now working on my second book, Walking Out of Babylon. Uh, and I'm looking at the whole issue of what does it mean to live in exile? And I'm going to wow. make the Promise thesis. me you'll send one. <laughs> yes, I will. Uh, I, I am developing the thesis that some point in our lives we all enter into exile, whether you're divorced, uh, if you lose a job, if you have some type of uh, physical disability, uh, certain ethnic groups, uh, Many of us have experienced the, uh, the problems and the persecution of living in exile. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when you get stuck? That's where I'm going with uh, that particular book. Mm -hmm. I'm anxious to, uh, I'm anxious to mm. get it. Now, was it your daughter's situation that, that really was the genesis for this book? Certainly part of that mm -hmm. situation when she was a... Um, a freshman at the University of Wyoming, she came home one day and shared that she was having some difficulty and she began to explain what was going on. And I had a, uh, a friend of mine who was a psychologist on our staff uh, look at her and she was diagnosed with uh, paranoid schizophrenia. And then from there we had to uh, get a second opinion and that was confirmed. Uh, and that was that was a painful time in our lives. That was um, an understatement right there. I, oh. 
I, you know, I, I've had children with problems, but, uh, physical problems, but that diagnosis would speak terror, I would think. Well, it did. It raises uh, all sorts of questions uh, for me, even as I was uh, pastoring at the time, where's God in this? I mean, she's a beautiful uh -huh. uh, young lady. Good she was, you. she was, uh, she's smart, intelligent. She had a lot of potential. And uh, that came crashing down on us as, as a family. Uh, ironically, what we discovered later was that it was a misdiagnosis and that uh, perhaps the correct diagnosis was a little known uh, disease called sarcoidosis, which we're trying to deal with now. Yeah, now in the scheme of your book, you get this diagnosis, which I'm somewhat familiar with. I have a friend mm. uh, with paranoid schizophrenia. And uh, so, but it's this, it's not this, it's this. Where does your, you know, the topic of blessings and cursings fit into this, into your experience, experience with your daughter? Well, one of the interesting things that took place, a friend of hers asked her one time if she could, if she could change things, would she? And she said, no. She said, by virtue of this uh, disease, I have come to empathize with those who are shut out uh, in our society. And that's one of the incredible problems that I think we have with regards to mental health. And one of the things that I had noted as uh, we began to deal with various doctors, if you have a mental disorder, oftentimes you are shut down by the medical community yeah. as if you don't know what you're talking about. And they don't have, they don't have a voice. And, and that's a primary and a specific problem that we have to deal with uh, with regards to mental disease. Do you know what I would call her response to you? That's kingdom thinking. Oh, yes. We think on mm -hmm. this level, and God wants us to think the way his kingdom runs, which is exactly mm -hmm. what she was doing. I uh, took a line out of your book, the lines of blessings and curses oftentimes become blurred as we deal with the complex reality of life and the world in which we live. Yes. That is so, so well said, that, that fog. Mm. Now, have you lived long enough that you know eventually the fog will lift? Yes. Uh, I think that was one of the reasons why I certainly wrote the book. It was cathartic from my uh, point of view. Uh, and certainly that's the case for a lot of folks. But uh, it gets back to chapter one, living in the world of paradox. Uh, that that is that fog, mm -hmm. but yet God has promised us uh, His blessings, and even more than that, there's nothing that goes on within our lives, within our community, that He does not uh, allow to go to waste. That He's always redeeming and resurrecting and transforming, uh, and if we have the patience. Uh, the humility uh, to begin to work through that, we always see his blessings. Yeah. Um, you also wrote, standing in the middle of the weeds, we find our way back to the wheat. That just, uh, that should speak volumes to people, to the viewers right now who feel they're right in the middle of a wheat patch. Yes. It's not a comfortable place to be. Mm -hmm but it helps us to realize our need, our want, and our desire for a redeemer to show us the way yes. back. Yes, he, re he redeems everything. Mm. Yes. When we put, when we put our mm. trust in him. Um, everything that seems on the surface to be evil may be good in disguise. Um, Isn't that, that again is that kingdom thinking. Yeah. Fascinating thought. Uh -huh. um, I remember uh, a number of years ago, perhaps you, you did, we had that major fire in uh, Yellowstone National Park. Yes. Devastating. Yeah. I went back there a year later to see the, the new growth. And one of the things that reporters forgot to say is that in order for the forest to survive in Yellowstone, 
from time to time, it needs a fire yeah. to break open the seed pods of the, the pine trees. Yep, over and over and over in, um, in nature. Um, I've only got about one minute, but uh, so this might be, not be fair, but um, the, ori the origin of the curse, you deal uh, with that a little bit. Well, with regards to the curse, the origin is somewhat problematic because scripture looks at it vaguely. I have come to the conclusion that many of the curses that we face, face in life, are brought on by our own choices and habits. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and when you begin to study that, when you begin to look at your own life, perhaps that becomes an aha moment. Aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, we've had the website up for uh, Reverend Perry for quite some time. I hope that uh, you've had a chance to write it down and uh, consider this book, uh, Walking Through the Weeds. I think it will encourage your heart. If you're going through a difficult time, a lot of Americans are right now. But uh, I'm telling you, our Lord's never depended mm -hmm. on the American economy or anything that's going on in politics. His kingdom is His kingdom, and it's different than this one. And I think if there's anything this book really does, it helps you to look at everything, good, bad, and different, through the eyes of His kingdom. And I think that's where He wants to be. That's probably a whole lot what is meant by it says that we renew our mind and that we are conformed to his thinking. And I often pray that. I said, Lord, please, I want my mind to be yours. I, I want to have that mind of Christ. And when you do, the things in this book are really going to, really going to come to life. They're going to really make sense to you. I hope you, that you will uh, t take an opportunity to get it. Thanks again for coming. Thank you what a, for what having a great me. great book, yeah. Uh, Sorry we're out of time, but I'll see you next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.